Shalom everybody, my name is Rabbi Yitzchak Shapira and I am the author of the Besorah according to COVID-19, the return of the kosher pig, and now the Rivka's remnant. I would like to tell you what to expect inside the Rivka's remnant. Inside the Rivka remnant, you will find two sections. Section number one deals specifically with prophecy. I have felt for a long time that the way we approach prophecy, especially in the Messianic Jewish world and the Christian world, violate Jewish principles of hermeneutics. So I've given you five principles of understanding prophecy in the last days. Secondly, we jump all the way from Genesis 25, Parashat Toldot, the birth of Yaakov to Esau, to the end of the story of Yaakov and Esau as our main narrative. In those 12 chapters, we see the entire picture of the good news, the role of Jacob, the role of the Gentiles, but most importantly, to bring you the picture after picture of the remnant so that you will transform to the remnant. We see the remnant reveal all the way from the beginning to the end in the life of Jacob and the impact that is have on Jacob who is also known Israel. What is the application for the last days and today end times? I want you to join me to discover this. So please check it out, www.rivkaremnant.com. Can't wait to get this in your hands. Shalom, everybody. Shabbat Shalom, Shabbat Shalom to everybody today that is joining us to Shabbat Korach. As you notice here today, real international uh, uh, announcement. And so the subtitles in Korean, the reason is that the Lord is doing some miraculous things. And I just want to give him praise as I see the sun is down, almost down, almost time for Shabbat. What a miraculous thing. Four weeks from now, exactly four weeks from now, I will be heading to South Korea. Please start to pray. God has done a miraculous thing this week. We as an organization have been seeking partner for a long time to uh, release all of our books in South Korea. And not only that, uh, to launch the yeshiva in South Korea. God answered both prayers this week. God is good and his mercy endures forever. We, we found probably the, the only true authentic messianic group that have a heart for the Jewish people and a heart for Israel. And they want to publish all those books in Korea. So with that being said, we just finished the book and now we are running to Korea. In the same week, we already have a retreat center already lined up. That is all coming together like that, like that. When the spirit of God is moving, it is moving quick. It's moving quick. Sometimes we have to pull teeth and grind and grind and grind. But sometimes the spirit of the living God is just pouring, pouring grace and mercy. The other thing that is a major, major news. Guess what? We just came back. You saw all the reports from the uh, the Dominican Republic. Guess what? In uh, July 21st, 22nd, 23rd, it's the worldwide release of El Ritono. El Ritono is our subset of our yeshiva. It's a pro program specifically for pastors. And we are launching it. So we are rushing back to the island. We have 137 pastors who are starting this program. 137. That's an awesome number. And guess what? 137 scholarships. Scholarship. Each scholarship is $1,500 over the course of two years. And we work with the Minister of Religion, and we are able 
to provide this scholarship all throughout the country. We're talking about a national revival. Friends, we need to believe, believe, believe today that the words, like in the Torah portion today, they have no validity on those last days. We will not rise up. Why, why didn't they went up? Why, why did they have the rebellion? What was going on in the Torah portion this week? You know what was going on? They didn't believe in Korach. It was enough for Korach to put a seed inside the heart of the people. We don't want to be like that. We want to believe the good account. We want to believe the good news. We want to believe the good report. We want to believe in a messianic revival. We want to believe that we are coming to the time of Mashiach. We want to be people of faith. And faith in Ibu Emuna come from the word Amen. Lit Amen. You know, I was watching this this afternoon. What an amazing, glorious moment for Israel football. You know, I'm a big football fan. Israel U19 made it to the final Euro against England. And lo and behold, we scored a goal. And we're about this close to score the second goal. But then something happened in the second half. We stopped believing. So what do we do when we stop believing? We retreat back. Instead of scoring the second and third and fourth goal, we, 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 we retreated back. The next thing you know, England tied the game. And then the game went to overtime. What do you think we did in overtime? We retreated back. And instead of just destroying the game and take the trophy home, England scored two goals on us when we lost 3-1. It's still a glorious day. Remember what I told you. When Israel means a major championship, is the day Mashiach comes. So we are pretty close today. We are not quite there. But Messiah almost came today. But why I'm telling you this? You know what was the problem? They didn't believe. If they had just a little bit more emuna, they surely would have won. They surely were victorious. Friends, emuna equivalent to your resources. So we signed a check for 137,000, 137 uh, scholarship, $210,000. That's almost a quarter of a million dollars this week. And then I went and see how much money we raised. And we raised 30,000. Do the math. If you have $210,000 in scholarship and you raise thirty-four thousand dollars you are in a deficit of roughly hundred and seventy five thousand dollars i'm talking to you about this right now as we enter to the shabbat this is a national revival this is a national revival this is a continental revival revival and that's what the thing about shabbat is a shabbat is a day that you get to experience a taste of the revival of the things to come, of the world to come, of the things that will be in the future. I'm asking you today, learn the culture. What do you think it's going to be Jewish? Who is the most generous people on the face of the earth? It's the Jews. It's the Jews. You want to be Jewish? You want to be like the house of Israel? First thing you need to learn is to learn how to give generously. And don't say, I can't give. If you can't give, call me. I'll give you. Okay? Because the mitzvah, the bracha, is in giving. Not in receiving, in giving. So today we need to believe 137 pastors, churches, will start their Jewish root of the faith journey. Okay? Korea. We are going to build a center in Korea. Money in the bank. Do I have the money now? No, I don't have the money now. But I think already what God is doing. It's going to happen. Brazil, it's going to happen. Africa, it's going to happen. I got the, the quote this week for the Ark and the Bima. Almost had a heart attack. It was so many numbers, so many digits. It was five digits number to build it. I'm like, God, help me. I don't know how I'm going to get this money. God is going to provide. But saying God not provide and not doing our part is a sin. So today I'm asking you, the decline that we have seen financially is 30% year over year. It's substantial. It's substantial. But I believe today, and I believe tomorrow, and I will believe the next day, that if it is from God, the people of God will understand it and step up.
God is not going to do it for, for us. We are going to do it together with God. So today in Parashat Korach, I'm asking you, let's not be like those clowns who say, no, 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 we are going up. This movement is going up. Hazan Gordon is here. If you ask him, he tell you, we're going up. That's what all the songs, songs of the ascents, it's all song to bring it up on Shabbat. There is the mundane, the whole, what we call in Hebrew, the whole, the regular, and we have the Kodesh. Today is going to tell you in the liturgy, what does it mean to separate? I'm afraid Ben Kodesh Lechol, who separate the Kodesh to the whole. Kedusha means there is extra help. So it isn't amazing to know if you give a, a shekel today, in Shabbat, your shekel worth two shekels in the heavens. If you give two shekels on the Shabbat, it's worth four shekels on, on, on the Shabbat. That's the beautiful master that we serve. So you see this operation sporadic. Maybe God says, well, I want to sponsor one scholarship, one scholarship. And you say, well, one, third, seven, one scholarship, it's not a lot. It's a lot. It's a lot. Even if you give one scholarship, if you give a portion of a scholarship, everything is counting. Everything is counting in those days. So we are counting on you, brothers and sisters. We are doing our part. We're going to run around South, South, uh, South Korea, then Africa, then France. Then if a lot, the Lord allow us with the vaccination to enter into Canada, Brazil, we are moving and we want you to move with us in this great ascension. So thank you in advance for your generosity I hope you hear my heart today because I'm excited. I'm so excited. I just need the resources right now so we can immediately, immediately pour them out for this great messianic revival. I wish you all Shabbat Shalom. Uvmevorach. Let's go to Mora Erin for this very special Kabbalah Shabbat preparation as we light the candle. Shalom Erin. Chag Sameach. I hope we can see you. Can we see you? Oh my goodness. See me? Hallelujah. We can see. I know you have been having because of the storm. So many problems. So we are going to do our very best. Hazan Golden and I, we're going to pray that you're going to be able to get through the lighting of the candle. Hazan and I will will probably handle today's services. Let's see how your connection holds up. Let's try it. Erin? Ah. Yes, Rabbi, can you hear me? Yeah, let's try to light those candles. I know you're having a problem with this connection. Let's try it. Oh, hey, no. Wow, Aaron, the connection is bad. I will recite the blessing. I see you lighting the candles. I will recite it, and I pray this upon you. Baruch atah Adonai, Eloheinu melech haolam, asher kitshanu b'mitzvotav, v'tsivanu lehadlik ner shel Shabbat. Blessed are you, Adonai, our God, King of the Universe, who sanctified us with his commandment and commanded us to kindle the light of Shabbat. Good Shabbos, Chazan Gordon. Let us enter in to the Shabbat Hamalka. What a great way to start it. Shabbat Shalom, Rabbi. Achama mekro shailan nut nistalka Bo uvenetze lekrat Shabbat Hamalka in the Hakdosha Habrocha, the Imamalachim Spashalom, O Manocha. Moe, Moe, Hamaka. Ah. Uh-huh. 
sun on the treetops no longer is he. Come gather to welcome the Sabbath, our Queen. Behold her descending, the Holy, the Blessed, and with her the angels of peace and of everyone a Shabbat Shalom as we together sing la 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 Kabbalat Shabbat worship service with a series of psalms beginning with Psalm 95. Lechu niranena, lechu niranena, lechu niranena, lechu lechu niranena tonight. Lechu niranena, lechu niranena, lechu lechu niranena Naria, Naria, the Tsuri Shainu, the Kadma Fan, the Naria, Naria, the Naria, In God's hand are the depth of the sea. The peaks of the mountains are God. God is in the sea. God made it and the land which God's hand fashioned. Come, let us bend the knee, bow down and kneel before Adonai our maker. For Adonai is our God and we are the people God tends, the flock in God's care. Oh, if you but heed God's charge this day. Go ahead, Rabbi. In God's hand are the depth of the earth, uh, the peaks of the mountains are God. 
God is in the sea. God made it in the land which God had fashioned. Come, let us bend the knee, bow down, and kneel before Adonai, our maker, for Adonai is our God, and we are the people God tends, the flock in God's care. Oh, if you would but heed God's charge this day. Arbaim shana akut pedor, ba omar am toel levav hem, hem lo yadehud rachai. Asher nishpati biapi im yevon el menuchati. Shiru la Adonai shir chadash. Shiru la Adonai kol ha'aretz. Sing to Adonai a new song. Sing to Adonai all the earth. Sing to Adonai, bless God's name. Proclaim God's victory day after day. Tell of God's glory among the nations, God's wondrous deeds among all peoples. For Adonai is great and much acclaimed. God is held in awe by all divine beings. All the gods of the peoples are mere idols, but Adonai made the heavens. Glory and majesty are before God. Strength and splendor are in God's temple. Yisbechu ha-shamayim v'tagel ha-aretz Yiram ha-yam umlo'o Ya'lo sadayim v'chol ha-shem po Ad yiranenu kol ha-tzei ya-ar L'tnei Adonai ki ba ki ba Nishpot ha-aretz Yishpot evel v'tzete Adonai Malach Tagela Aretz. Adonai is sovereign. Let the world rejoice. God's throne is founded on justice. Though God be clouded from view, divine justice reveals God's presence. God's lightning illuminates the earth. Fire consumes God's foe. Mountain melt like wax before Adonai. The air trembles. The heavens proclaim God's righteousness. All people behold His majesty. Shame cover those who worship idols, those who take pride revering images, which must themselves bow low before God. Hearing of your judgments, Adonai, Zion exalts, and the cities of Judah rejoice. You are supreme over all the earth, highly exalted beyond all that is worshipped. Those who love Adonai hate evil, God protects the faithful and saves them from the wicked. Light is stored for the righteous, joy for the honorable. Rejoice in Adonai, you who are righteous. Acclaim the holiness of God's name. O hapei Adonai, sine wora, shomer nafshot chasidam yad rishayim yatzilem. מזמור, שירו לאדוני שיר חדש, כי נפלאות עשה, הושיע לו ימינו וזרוע קודשו. Sing to the Lord a new song, for he has performed wonders. His right hand and holy arm have wrought deliverance for him. The Lord has made known his Yeshua. He has revealed his justice before the eyes of the nation. He has remembered his loving kindness and faithfulness to the house of Israel, all from the farthest corners of the earth, witness the deliverance by our God. Raise your voices in jubilation to the Lord, all the earth. Burst into joyous song and chanting. Sing to the Lord with a harp, with a harp and the sound of a song, with trumpets and the sound of the shofar. Jubilate before the King, the Lord. The sea in its fullness will roar in joy, the earth and its inhabitants. <laughs> יחד הרים ירענן, לפני אדוני כי בא לשפוט הארץ, 
Ich bote väl med sädder Med ami med mig shari Adonai Malach Irgazu Amim. Adonai sovereign, nations tremble. God is enthroned on high. The very earth quivers. Adonai is great in Zion, exalted over all peoples. Let them praise God, for God is awesome and holy. The king is mighty. He rules with love of justice. You alone bring about equity, ordaining justice and compassion for the people of Jacob. Exalt Adonai our God, worship God who is holy. Moses, Aaron, and Samuel, God chosen ones, called out to Adonai, who answered them in a pillar of cloud. They zealously strove to obey the divine law, when even when God's decrees were beyond their grasp. You responded to them with compassion, even as you rebuked them for their offenses. Extol Adonai and bow toward God's holy mountain, Adonai, our God, is holy. Adonai Eloheinu Adonita El nasea itelahem benokeim alalilotam Promemo Adonai Eloheinu Behishtachavu lehar kodshu Ki kadosh Adonai Eloheinu is more David. Is more David. Have we had Adonai bnei Elim? Have we had Adonai kavod veoz? A psalm of David, ascribed to Adonai, of divine beings, ascribed to Adonai glory and strength. Ascribed to Adonai the the glory of God's name. Bow down to Adonai, majestic in holiness. The voice of Adonai is over the water. The, glo- the God of glory thunders, Adonai over the mighty waters. The voice of Adonai is power. The voice of Adonai is majesty. The voice of Adonai breaks cedars. Adonai shattered the cedars of Lebanon. God make Lebanon skip like calves, Iran, like a young wild ox. The voice of Adonai kettle flames of fire. The voice of Adonai convulses the wilderness. Adonai convulses the wilderness of Kadesh. The voice of Adonai causes cows to calf and strips forest bare, while God te- in God's temple all say glory. Adonai sit in throne at the flood. Adonai sit in throne, sovereign forever. May Adonai grant strength to God's people. May Adonai bestow on God's people. Shalom. Oh, by a resort, yarrow, who have a law, who law, on the governor. Adonai, Adonai, Adonai Ebarei Et Amo Vashalom Amen and, and Shabbat Shalom to everybody who is watching us right now. Uh, before we enter to the Rechad Odi, we are in very interesting parasha uh, this week, Parashat Korach. And tomorrow morning, I'm going to be teaching not once, but twice on the parasha. There is something very interesting in the parasha that I'd like, like to draw your attention to. As you recall the story of Parashat Korach, we have the people who are turning against Moshe and against Aaron. And as they're turning against Moshe and Aaron, we see something very interesting happen. There's a plague that is starting to take a hold upon the people. This is something very important to us to understand that sometimes in the scripture, we see it multiple times that a plague uh, here the word negif, where we get the word magifa, is a result of a spirit. It's a spiritual condition. It's a spiritual condition. And here the Torah portion says something very interesting. It says in chapter 17, verse uh, 
12, he says, ויקח אהרון כאשר דיבר משה, וירץ אל תוך הקהל, והנה החל הנגב בעם, וייתן את הקטורת, ויכפר על העם. I want you to pay attention to the end of this. He says, and Aaron took it as, as Moses as, a, as an order, and he ran in the midst of the community. He's running to the community, and then the plague has become among the people. But the incense that is being passed by him start to make a kapara upon all people. And then we see a very interesting passage. It says, Vaya'amod ben ametim hu ben achaim v'ta'atzer ha'megifah. And Aaron stood between the dead and the living, and the plague stopped. Now, it's important to ask the question, what does it mean to stand between the dead and the living? What does that mean? Let me give you a very interesting parshanut on this expression, vayamod. The word vayamod does not literally mean just to stand, like stand. It means that he's making a barrier. between a gap, between, between the Magifat that's coming to destroy Malach Amavet and, the, and, and those who are about to be destroyed by this. So listen to this, what it says there. It says, the Mepharshanim says the, fo- the, the, the following thing, and I found it to be, what does it mean? It says in Midrash Tanchuma, it says, and Aaron Took, I'm reading it straight from the Midrash, and Aaron took hold of the angel of death physically and prevented him from killing Bnei Israel. Do you understand what he's saying here? You and I have the authority and the power to stand between our families, between our community, and between Malach HaMavet, Malach HaMavet. And this is something that I have to explain to all of you. Even Amal Ach Amavet, who call a mashchit, they call a mashchit, even the Malach Amavet, when there is such a tzaddik who can say, he can even deter death inside the camp. The idea here is very important. A tzaddik can stand in the gap. This is very important for, principle for us to understand today because you know obviously we read that they died in the play came for uh, 14,700 die in this they swallowed up well if we stood in the gap why is it why is it that um, 14,000 died why is it that so many because they didn't believe in the tzaddik you see the issue in the end of the day is is the issue of Emuna. The entire song of the Lechado Di is a song of Emuna. If one have a faith in the one who can stand between the living and between the dead, guess what? He's going to receive life. He's going to receive blessing. He's not going to die. He's not going to be perishing. But if he doesn't believe in the Tzaddik, okay, then he will perish. That's why he says in the song, he says, Awake, await, your light has come. Arise, shine, cool me, only. What, what, what is that? That's believing that there is one who's going to be standing between the life and the death. You see, uh, the, the color is almost like good as dead. Uh, this entire existing status, the color is, is dead because she's not dressed. She's not prepared. She does not believe. It's a definition of being spiritually uh, dead. But he says to her, well, enter in peace, O crown of your husband. Enter in gladness. Well, you, you, there's an element of faith. And, you know, today I'm talking to you about things that are happening all over the world. We are about to experience a national revival. In South Korea how did we get to this point of national revival in a country oh it's because we poured millions and millions of dollars in and it, no one individual received a revelation from God to go and translate one book the Besora according to COVID-19 and this person gave themselves up for this thing and look what's happened the nation is being resurrected now. 
We have been receiving hundreds and hundreds of calls, literally, from South Korea, telling us, Besora, according to COVID-19, changed my walk with God. I have to know more. How did it happen? One person. How is Israel being saved in this Torah portion? One person, Aaron, who stands between the dead and between the living. And here we see a beautiful picture of one Khatan, one Khatan who stands for one Kala. His name is Yeshua. We don't need other Khatanim. We just need one groom. And this one groom is good enough to bring the one kala from a status of death to living. So what is this song? It's a song for resurrection from death of the kala to the resurrection of the kala. What are we to do today to be this one person, I believe, who stand between the dead and the living? Will you be this person today who stand between the dead and the living? It's applied to your community. It's applied to your family. It's applied for your friends. You can be this one person who stands today between the dead and the living to bring the message of Lechaim for life. The Lechadodi is the message of life. In the end of the day, you know the story of Korach? It's a story of life. Lechaim. To obtain life. It is Yeshua came who said, I came to give you life in greater abundance. When we say in Hebrew, Lechaim, it doesn't mean just for life. It means to fullness, for your plentitude, for your melo. So today remember that, that you can be this person who can stand between the living and the dead and stop those plagues. It's starting with the power of your mouth and in your actions, your emuna and your kavana. And if we get those things, without a doubt, we will be this empowered kala. May we be an empowered kala as uh, we enter into the lechadodi. What you say, Chazan Gordon, let's do it. Beloved, come to meet the bride. Beloved, come to greet Shabbat. Beloved, come to meet the bride. Beloved, come to greet Shabbat. Keep and remember a single command the only God wants us to hear. The eternal is one, his name is one, is our honor and glory and praise. Beloved, come to meet the bride, beloved. to meet Shabbat forever a fountain of blessing still it flows as from the start the last of days for which the first was made beloved come to meet the bride beloved come to greet Shabbat beloved come to meet Bride, be loving, come to greet Shabbat. Awake, awake, your light has come. Arise, shine, awake, and sing. Awake, awake, your light has come. The eternal's glory dawns upon you. Beloved, come to meet the bride, be Come to meet the bride, beloved. Come to greet the heart. Enter in peace, O crown of your.
her husband and her in gladness and her in joy come to the people that keeps its faith enter O oh bride enter O oh bride beloved come to be the bride beloved come to greet Shabbat beloved come to be מזמור שיר ליום השבת, טוב להודות לאדוני ולזמר לשמך עליון. A song for Shabbat, it is good to acclaim Adonai, to sing your praise, exalted God. To affirm your love each morning and your faithfulness each night, to the music of the lute and the melody of the harp. Your works, Adonai, make me glad. I sing with joy of your creation. How vast your work, Adonai. Your designs are beyond our grasp. The thoughtless cannot comprehend. The foolish cannot fathom this. The wicked may flourish, springing up like grass, but their doom is sealed, for you are supreme forever. Your enemies, Adonai, your enemies shall perish. All the wicked shall crumble. But for me, you have greatly exalted I am anointed with fragrant oil. I have seen the downfall of my foes. I have heard the despair of my attackers. Cannot, cannot be continually welding his brush. He must stop at times in his painting to freshen his vision of the object, the meaning of which he wishes to express on his canvas. Living is also an art. We dare not become absorbed in its technical processes and lose our consciousness of its general plan. The Shabbat represents those moments when we pause in our brushwork to renew our vision of this object. Having done so, we take ourselves to our painting with clarified vision and renewed energy. This applies to the individual and to the community alike. Amen. Praise Adonai, the blessed one. Praise Adonai, the blessed one, now and forever. Baruch Hu et Adonai HaMevorach Baruch Adonai HaMevorach Le'olam Ba'ed Baruch Adonai HaMevorach Le'olam Ba'ed Oh, 
אדוני אלוהינו מלך העולם, אשר בדברו מעריב ערבים בחוכמה פותח שערים, בתבונה משנה איתי, ומחליף את הזמנים, ומסדר את הכוכבים במשמרתיהם ברקיע כרצונו. בורא יום ולילה, גולל אור מפני חושך, וחושך מפני אור. Blessed are you, אדוני our God. King of the universe, who by his word bring on evenings. With wisdom open gates, with understanding alter period changes the seasons, and order the stars in their heavenly constellation as he wills. תמיד נבלוך עלינו לעולם בעד, ברוך אתה אדוני המהרי ורבי. We read together, you create day and night. You roll away the light before the darkness and the darkness before the light. You made the day pass and bring on the night. You divide the day from the night. The Lord of hosts is your name. Living God and enduring continually, may you reign over us forever and ever. Blessed are you, Adonai, who brings on the evening. Ahavat olam, Beit Yisrael, Bible, Deuteronomy, Mark, and Luke, we find the Shema. She was asked, which one is the most important mitzvah? And the answer is, we do right now. Shema Yisrael, Adonai Eloheinu, Adonai Echad. Hero Israel, 
the Lord is our God, the Lord is one. And he continued, the second greatest mitzvah, ve'ahavta l'reacha kamocha. Love your neighbor as yourself. Hear, O Israel, the Lord is our God, the Lord is one. Bless his name, whose glorious kingdom is for Israel, the Lord is our God, the Lord is one, blesses his, his name, whose glorious kingdom is forever and ever. Amen, amen. And continued. ושפיכה ובקומך, וקשרתם לאות על ידיך, והיו לתותפות בין עיניך, וכתבתם על מזוזות ביתך ובשעריך. And you shall love Adonai, your God, with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your might. This word that I command you today shall be upon your heart. And teach them diligently to your children and speak of them when you sit in your home and when you walk along the way and when you lie down and when you rise up and bind them as a sign on your arm and let them be the feeling between your eyes and write them on the doorposts of your house and on your gates. True and trustworthy is all this and it is established with us that he is the Lord our God and there is none beside him and that we, Israel, are his people. It is he who redeemed us from the hand of kings, even our king, who delivered us from the grasp of tyrants. The God who on our behalf dealt out punishment to our adversaries and requited us, all mortal enemies, who does great things, yet and wonders without number. Who maintains us in life and does not suffer our feet to slip, who made us overcome and conquer our enemies and exalted our strength above all them that hated us. Who wrought for us miracles and retribution upon Pharaoh, signs and wonders in the land 
of the children of Ham, who in his wrath smote the firstborn of Egypt and brought forth his people, Israel, from among them to everlasting freedom. When his children witnessed his power, they extolled him and gave him thanks. Freely they acclaimed him king, and full of joy, Moses and all Israel sang this song. and rise us up, our guardian to life renewed, spreads over us the shelter of your shalom. Guide us with your good counsel for your name's sake. Be our help. Shield and shelter us beneath the shadow of your wings. Defend us against enemies, illness, war, famine, and sorrow. Distance us from wrongdoing. For you, God, watch over us and deliver us. For you, God, are gracious and merciful. God, are going and coming to life and to peace evermore. Blessed are you, Adonai, guardian of Israel, whose shelter of peace is spread over us, over all your people, Israel, and over Yerushalayim. Ashki veinu Adonai, hello heinu lechalom, a hami deinu malkeinu lechayi. Ashki veinu Ovoeno le khayim le shalom metao be arolam. 
together. The children of Israel shall guard the Shabbat day in all generations as a covenant for all the world. Between me and the children of Israel, it is a sign forever. That in six days Adonai made heaven and earth, and on the seventh day he rested, and he was refreshed. God was about to give the Torah to Israel. He summoned the people and said to them, My children, I have something precious that I would like to give you for all time if you will accept my Torah and observe my mitzvot. The people then asked, Master of the universe, what is that precious gift you have for us? The only one, blessed be he, replied, It is the world to come. The people of Israel answered, Show us a sample of the world to come. The Holy One, blessed be He, said, The Shabbat is a sample of the world to come, for that world will be one long Shabbat. Amen. <laughs> I Elohim, Ata Adonai Eloheinu Elohei Avoteinu Elohei Abraham Elohei Yitzchak Elohei Yaakov Ha'el Ha'gadol Ha'gibol Ha'nora El El Hion Donei Shemayim Va'arvim Ha'gein Ha'mot Ha'arvim Me 
Remember what happened in the beginning. Our God and God of our Father, may you be pleased in our rest, sanctify us in your commandments, and grant us our portion in your Torah. Satisfy us by your goodness, gladden us in your Yeshua, and purify our heart to serve you faithfully in love and favor. Adonai, our God, grant us your holy Shabbat as a heritage, and may Israel, who sanctify your name, rest in it. Blessed are you, Adonai, who make the Shabbat holy. Amen. Amen. Eloheinu, Elohei Aboteinu, Ritz, But in Father in heaven, may your name be sanctified, may your kingdom come, as your will be done in the heavens, may it also be done on earth. Give us the bread that is our portion today, and forgive us on our debts, as we have also forgiven those who indebted to us. And do not lead us into temptation, but save us from the evil one, for to you is the kingdom, the power, and the glory for endless eternities. Avinu shabba shamayim Yikadol shemecha Tavo malchutecha yaser etzoncha Kaasher va shamayim Kam ba'aretz Ed lechem vukeinu den lanu hayom 
ומחל לנו על חובותינו כאשר מחלנו גם אנחנו לחייבים. ואל תביאנו לידי ניסיון כי אם תחלצנו מן הרע כי לך הממלכה והגבורה והתפארת לעומי עולם Bless the household of Israel wherever they dwell. Be with us where we worship you in freedom and may those who live under oppressive rule find release and liberty speedily in our own day. May your favor rest upon Israel, her land, her people. Protect her against hatred and war. Grant that the promise of her beginning may ripen into fulfillment, bringing comfort to those who seek refuge. Light to those who dwell in darkness, new hope to all humanity. This we ask in the precious name of Yeshua HaMashiach. It is custom to be standing when we recite the Aleinu if you are able. Aleinu l'shabeach l'adon hakon L'tet g'dul al yotzer b'reichit שלא עשנו כגיי הארצות, ולא שמענו כמשפחות האדמה. שלא שם חלקנו כהם, וגורלנו ככל המונם. We bend in bow. ואנחנו קוראים ומשתחווים ומודים לפני מלך מלכי המלכים הקדוש ברוך הוא. May the time not be distance, Adonai, when your name shall be worshipped in all the earth, when unbelief shall disappear and error be no more. Fervently, we pray that the day may come when all shall turn to you in love, when corruption and evil shall give away to integrity and goodness, when suspicion and superstition shall no longer enslave the mind nor idolatry, blind the eye, when all who dwell on earth shall know that you alone are God. Oh, may all created in, in your image become one in spirit and one in friendship forever united in your service. Then shall your kingdom be established on earth. And the word of your prophet fulfilled, the Lord will reign forever and ever. <laughs> והיה אדוני למלך על כל הארץ ביום ההוא, ביום ההוא יהיה אדוני אחד. Sing with me. ביום ההוא, ביום ההוא יהיה אדוני אחד. יתקדל ויתקדש מרבה. אמן. ברמה דבי חירותי וימליך מלכותי. ויצמח פורקנה ויקרב ישוע משיחי. אמן. בחיי חון וביום החון וחיי דחל בו את בית ישראל. בעגלה הוא בזמן קריב ואמרו אמן. יהא שמי רבה מבורך לעולם ולמי עלמיה. יתברך וישתבח ויתפאר ויתרומם ויתנשא ויתהדר ויתעלה לקודשה ויתהלל שמה בריחו. מיכו. לעולם מכל ברכתה ושירתה 
תוש בחטא נחם מטה, דאמירן בעלמא ואמרו, אמן. יש למה רבה, מן שמיא, וחיים עלינו ועל כל ישראל, ואמרו, אמן. עושה שלום במרומיו, הוא יעשה שלום עלינו ועל כל ישראל, ואמרו, אמן. אמן. לא, אני איתך תמיד, even unto the end of the world. Amen. Amen. Adon Olam, Asher Malam, Terem Kol Yitzir Nivra, Lehen Nasa, Bechef Sokol, Azai Malek Shemho Nekra,
Shabbat Shalom, everybody. We are in a very interesting time of year. We're leading up to the fasts. Uh, this is the fourth month, the month of Tammuz, and we'll have the fast of the fourth month on the 17th day of Tammuz, which is uh, on less than three weeks. And so we look back at the Torah portions that we've had for the last few weeks. And three weeks ago, in the Torah portion, we had the assignment of 70 elders. And the task of the 70 elders, right, that is the heads of the families, clans, and tribes, was to settle disputes by interpreting Torah. This is what their assignment was by Moshe, by Hashem. Then we had the following Torah portion, the mitzvah of the tzitzit, that we will see them and remember all of Hashem's commandments and do them, not prostituting ourselves, not following after our own hearts and own eyes. This is very clearly saying, we don't get to interpret the Torah. We take the disputes about interpretation of Torah, like we take disputes between people, to the 70, and they interpret it. This is what they're there for. And so we just look at our tzitzit and see them and remember this. Once these things have been very clearly stated, then we have this week, the rebellion of Korach. Now, what did Korach do? Korach questioned whether Moshe and Aaron should be in the leadership positions that they are in. Wasn't the entire nation of Israel holy? He asked. Isn't Korach himself leaving? Of course. So why shouldn't he be in leadership? Why is it just Moshe Rabbein? Now, this question has a lot of levels to it. But the base question is, is Moses appointed by Hashem? And if Moses' leadership is established by Hashem, then there's no question. But Korach doesn't believe that it is. And so Korach unflinchingly, without question, is perfectly willing to go through the test of the incense, knowing full well from the history of Nadav and Avihu, Aaron's other sons, that were killed when they brought the incense incorrectly with a strange fire knowing that that's a potentially a death penalty if they're wrong. And Korach has no problem with that. Korach is 100% convinced that he's correct in the eyes of Hashem. He is absolutely correct in the eyes of Hashem, in his mind. And what happens? He's not correct in the eyes of Hashem. And he and his followers are burned up, swallowed up by the earth. Now there's a bit of Musar here. And that's why I opened with talking about the previous Torah portion. So the ethics here, the Musar, is very important. If a leader is following Hashem's path, they're supposed to be in leadership. How do we know if someone is following Hashem's path? Path. Well, if it's in question, if one person says, I'm following Hashem, the other person says, I'm following Hashem. One person says, I'm following Torah. The other person says, well, Hashem told me directly. This is a problem, right? So how do we determine? And the answer is very simple. 
it is up to the 70 to interpret the Torah. So if you're following Torah, you're following Torah. If Hashem is speaking to you directly, then there is no contradiction with what Hashem is saying in fulfilling Torah, specifically fulfilling Torah the way Israel determines Torah should be fulfilled. Because we are not to follow after our own eyes and own heart and prostitute ourselves. That was last week's portion. This week's portion is Korach. What happens when you don't do that? Destruction. So when leadership is in question, there is only one way to determine whether the leadership is correct or not. Does the leadership follow Torah? And does the leadership direct Israel toward Torah? Does the leader look at Israel and say, we should be following Torah? That's what the leadership is about. Because if that's true, then Israel is following Hashem. We're getting closer to following Hashem. And if a potential leader is not doing that, if a potential leader is saying, no, you don't have to follow Torah, or you shouldn't follow Torah, that they're not a leadership, they're not leadership from Hashem. It's really fairly simple. It can appear complicated because if you have two people say that God is speaking to me, and yet what they're being told is two completely separate things, then how do you determine? And the lesson of Korach is what keeps us from having thousands and thousands and thousands of denominations. Or it should keep us from that. Who is right, this leader or this leader? We determine. This leader says follow Torah. This leader does not. And they're out. It's that simple. And that is the ethical lesson of Korach. Shabbat Shalom. Shabbat Shalom, Rabbi Bernstein. I was so passionate you could not hear me speaking? Not at all. <laughs> I figured you're so interested because you're listening. I'm talking to myself. <laughs> I'm, I'm, try, I'm trying to read your lips. I was not very successful. Oh, my <laughs> goodness. Oh, my goodness. Well, I apologize, everybody, for that. Thank you, Rabbi Bernstein. Excellent word. Excellent word. And it is truly a machloket, not for the sake of heaven what we see clearly happening here in the text. Everybody have to remember that. So excellent. Thank you so much for the Musa today. Friends, I apologize to everybody. I had so many amazing things to tell you, but I could not tell you those because I was speaking to myself in such an excitement. And then I had, my phone started to ring. My goodness, my goodness, friends, I'm going to make it up to you. Uh, in a second, because I'm going to give you a brief, uh, very brief uh, Devar Musar that I really wanted to share this evening. Uh, double dosage. But before that big week, friends, big week, we finally came back to Dominican Republic. And in the Torah portion this week, we read those words in uh, number 16 about Dotan Baviram, Moshe Rabbeinu calling them. And he says hey, to them, are you coming? Are you, are you in? And they said, Lo nale, and we're not in. And I really believe right now we have an opportunity. God is asking us as a messianic movement, are we in? Are we in? Are we in with this global revival? This global revival, are we in with that? And I pray that you say yes. If the messianic movement will say, Lona Ale today, God help us. And let me tell you what this Aliyah look like, not just for Avatami, for all of us who are could take this term messianic. It means that we are ready to step up to the plate for a global messianic revival. Friends, the paper has been handed to us. The very first action 
and check out. It's all on our YouTube channel. We made it public for you. Very first action that we went is we met with the advisor to the president, the minister of religion. First thing I talked to him about, messianic revival. Very first thing. Then I went to the largest seminary and I said, messianic revival. Are you in or are you out? Stop playing games. Are we in or are we out? The minister of, of religion said, we're in. Okay? The, 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 the largest seminary says, we are in. And I went to the largest churches and says, messianic revival now. Not tomorrow, not next week, not next, next month. It is now. Are you in or you're out? We built this amazing program called El Retorno. It's a program for restoration for Spanish speakers, for pastors specifically. Are you in your out? Well, I don't understand it. Well, you need to understand it. No, you don't. Do you hear from God? Are you in and you're out? All of them said, I am in. So because of that, and because of this moment that God is speaking, he's speaking to people, not just Jewish people who follow Messiah. He's speaking also to a remnant from the church right now. Look what happened. 137 scholarships were awarded this last week 137 scholarships $1500 per scholarship given by Avat Ami to a national revival guess what three weeks from now we are back because we have the national gathering and the national launching Fred this is what it's meant to step up this is what it means do the math the math is $210,000 worth of scholarship money being awarded. Friends, stepping up means that you are walking in faith. I raised only $35,000. Where am I going to raise another $175,000? Now we're going to launch it. We need to have the people on the ground. We need to have the people. On, we have to establish the physical center. It have to be a Torah center right now. All of this is going to take guilt, 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 and a lot of guilt. Not guilt, but guilt. Money, resources. That's what is going to take place. So what we do? We're going in faith. We already said, Nale. well, God, I don't know where it's going to come from. I tell you where it's going to come from. It is going to come from people who hear from God. That's where it's going to come from. It's not going to come from a single individual. We don't have people who support us who are, who are multi We don't. We don't. We have regular people who are coming. One guy give $5. One guy give $10. One guy give $1,000. But we have regular, ordinary people who believe in the ascension of the nations right now. And believe me when I say to you, that's all what we need. We need everybody to pull together and we will be able to have the center established in the Dominican Republic with the El Ritorno launching. And what it takes, it takes one person. It takes one person. Look at the news this week. Supernatural. You know, we, we wrote the Besora according to COVID-19 in my book, the Besora according to COVID-19. It's a, That book is amazing. If you have not read it, I'm not saying it because I wrote it. I said because the nature of the revelation, how it came about, how it came about so supernatural. So, you know, we start to release in Spanish, Italian, French, whatever. And then one person, only one person, look at that, have a vision, said, you know what? We are going to change the nation. We're going to translate it to Korean. And I said to this person, her name is Michelle. Michelle, you sure you want to take it upon yourself? 550 pages? Are you out of your mind? And she worked, she worked, she worked. She finally released it. And guess what? The book caught fire in South Korea to the point that we start to get phone calls and emails where pastors when this is changing my life. This is changing changing my ministry. So we prayed because guess what? Look at this. This is this week. This is today. Today, the news for today. Rivka Remnant about to be released. But this is very different release. Guess where it's going to be released? We're going to do one release in the U.S. And God has sent us a gift this, this, this week. He sent us a partner to partner with us so that we can print it in in. Um, South Korea. So instead of paying 90 bucks for a book, 
people will pay 30 bucks for a book and will be able to read it and, and be touched by God. It's going to reach the thousands. It's going to reach a thousand without a shadow of that. How did it happen? It's happened for one person. One person having a revival. So when of one person having a revival, uh, uh, it's it's uh, getting the vision. One person getting the vision. It's affecting the entire world. It's affecting the entire community. One person. You can be this person today. Don't think your gift of a dollar or five dollar or a hundred. It don't think it doesn't matter. It does matter. Everything matter when we have a kingdom principle. When we walk according to the kingdom, everything, everybody, everything we do, everything matters. We need to understand it. Let's let's look a little bit about Africa, friends. We've got the big news this week. So guess what? We are going to launch, after all, the synagogue in Africa on August the 20th. Because I talked to the architect this week, and he says to me, hey, big news for you. It's your lucky day. We're getting the work done. We're getting the work done. Or say, okay, how much is going to cost us? Say twenty thousand dollars. Thanks God that part of this money is 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 been donated. The other eleven thousand dollars we have to come up with today, right now. We have to come up with eleven thousand dollars today to build the stage, to do something about the lighting. And you need to understand the economics. I wanted to paint the walls. I said to them, hey, can we paint the wall? He said, yeah, we can paint the wall. To paint the wall, one room is 10,000 US dollars. Friend, we're dealing with another econo- economy, another, another set. It's, it's difficult. The Torah, we wanted to ship. The, to- the, the Torah ark, we wanted to ship over $5,000 just to ship an ark. I want you to understand that. So we're, we're working around the problem. In short, we have to raise up between now and August 20th, $75,000 for all the work that needs to be done. We hire the staff, just like in the Dominican Republic. We bring the Torah. We bring the electrical equipment. We bring all of those things. And they says, God, God, it's your problem. It's your problem. No, he said, it's your problem. Let me let me tell you what God says. No, he said, it's your problem because I called you to ascend. So make my problem, God says, make it your problem. This is the, you want to know what it means to take the yoke of the kingdom of God. It's taking God problem. And what God problem is one thing, you want to be unified with his people. That is his greatest desire, to be unified with his people. That is his desire. Take it upon yourself. Take upon yourself the yoke today, friend. Let's carry this burden. Don't say, oh, those people in Africa, they carry the burden. No, they're not carrying the burden. We are the carrier of their burden. We are their brother's keeper. We're going to fulfill Galatians 6 too. We are going to be doing that. Okay? This is our response. That's what it means to be messianic. We carry each other around. There's a burden right now for 137 pastors. What, I'm going to wait from the heaven? No, I'm not going to wait forever. I'm going to do what I need to do right away. Take the actions. And even if I'm wrong, even if I'm failing, I believe that God's grace is enough. It's enough. So I spoke to our carpenter. I said, build me a giant drawing with 75 different steps all the way to this new synagogue right now in Africa. I bet you. Build it to me. Put 75 steps. And I would like to see 75 people who become the original founding members of historic moment where we established the first synagogue, actual synagogue in Zimbabwe, the very first real synagogue with Torah, with Aftara, with an ark, with everything, with Sidurim, truly a synagogue. And I say, we, I want to see if we can raise, Rabbi Bershaw spoke about 70. I said, let's see if I can raise 75 people who can commit you $1,000 each. That's all what we need, 75. Don't ask anybody to give me a check for $75,000 because you don't have it, I don't have it. We don't have this kind of money, most of us. But if we pull together, we will be able to move mountains. And what is it? One person at a time. So this is what is happening right around us. I refuse to accept this message, Lonale. And you should refuse it. I will not accept. We as a movement, 
cannot accept the message, we will not go up. We are ascending. Messianic Judaism have to be ascending at this moment in time. This is the time to arise and shine. We cannot sit in the back and expect somebody else to do the work. Look at this century. It's happening all over the world. It's so encouraging. Look at our German brothers. They got it done. One person translated. Sadra came and helped. This is releasing. Rivka Remnant. He's making an impact. And what is happening while well, it's making an impact? More people just quetching. Oh, you're Judaizing the church. Oh, you're against Christian. No. If I'm telling the church, go up, rather to tell them, I bring Jerusalem down to you. I do the, the most loving thing that I can do. And I hope you understand it. Is we calling people to ascend. We calling people to come up. Come, let us go up. Is the message we cannot say we will not go up, and we have to reject the poverty spirit in the messianic Jewish movement. We have to reject the lack of vision. I'm going to talk about this uh, 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 tomorrow in the main services, uh, a special midrash. We have to reject those things, and we have to believe. The Messianic Judaism is called to be at the front, up front. Friend, we need you to believe with us today and be part of this. It's very simple. If you have a heart for this Faradim, give to the operations Faradit. If you love the Geula, all the work globally, give to the Geula. If you want to be part of this $1,000 thousand, thousand uh, patron for this synagogue that is living, do it. doesn't matter what it is and how much it is. What matter is our attitude, beloved. I want you to join me tomorrow. There is a plea for Messianic Judaism. In one essence, he's saying to them, why are you exalting themselves? And another way, he said to them, they say, we're not going up. There are two different exaltations. There are two different ascensions. And we have to decide what kind of movement. Beloved, listen to me. We have to decide. Are we going to fit the shoes of this prophetic move of God that God has called us as a movement? What I'm seeing right now, friend, is a sign of a national revival in, in different areas that is going to lead to a global revival. And I pray today because I want to give you this word that as you receive it, you will not say lonale. Don't say those words. Don't believe today that God has more for the Messianic Jewish movement to go than once a year to a conference in, a, in the Eastern United States and just tap each other on the back and say, oh, we are so great. No, we are not that great. No, the Messiah is yet to come. We cannot stop now. We have to work now in more zeal, more power, more strength. That's why I, I told my wife, I told my wife, this next month, it's going to be tough. It's going to be tough. I have to go from this country to this country, this country, to this. But I told her, we are experiencing the ascension of the Messianic Jewish movement. Friends, read the Rivka remnant. Be part of this ascension. It is a must. Don't just read it. Do the course with it and start the ascension. It's time. And it's starting with faith, with emuna. Check out this brief word today. Lo naale. May God bless you. I hope this minister to you run and support this today. Let us ascend together as a movement. Check this out. שלום חברים, הם ברוכים הבאים, שבת שלום, to פניני התורה, הפרוגרם that is decide to walk you through the Torah, week by week, portion by portion, as we discover the Messiah of Israel, the redemption, the Geula, and how do we bring back Messiah to the world, and that's actually one of the things that I want to talk to you about today, the return of the Arda King and the redemption that he's called us to bring into the world so that his name will be glorified. And this Torah portion, this Shabbat, 
פרשת קורח is in many ways very emotional, uh, very sad Torah portion. Moses gave himself to the people and the people of course rebelled. We are in uh, Numbers uh, 15 and, and we read the shocking line in the beginning of the Torah portion here when, when, when Korach stand out and he says in, in arrogance, he says, he says uh, in verse 3 it says there, Vaikalu al Moshe ve'al Aaron. If you have your Bible, they gather. They, the word Vaikalu, they not. They gang Moses. They gang Aaron. They, they just mug them. Okay. Vayomru elam. Speak to him. Rav lachem. Ki kol ha'eda. Kulam k'toshim. Who are you, Moses? Who are you, Aaron? Everybody is holy. Why are you making yourself? Why do you elevate yourself? Okay? And I love Moses' response. Instead of arguing as the people gang up on him, Moses fall upon his face. And he knows what is coming. And he, he's interceding for uh, those uh, 250 leaders, friend. This is, a, this, is, this is a lesson in leadership here. I want to focus, though, <clears throat> not on what Korach did, but I actually want to co co focus for a moment on what took place afterward, because I think there's a great lesson here on uh, the Geula and what God is calling you to do, specifically if you watch this program, in those last days, okay? As this happened, Moses is trying to find alliances, okay? Because he understand the trouble coming, okay? And in verse 12, we read an interesting words, at least it's very interesting in the Hebrew language. And I want to focus for a moment with you on this verse today as our key verse in uh, Pnei Torah. It says, Vaishlach Moshe likrol ledatan veleaviram. He call messenger to call to Datan and Aviram, son of Eliav. And as he says, he sent them uh, emissaries to call them. They answered with the word Vayomu. They spoke in one voice, Lo Naale. We will not go up. The rabbis have asked the question, what is the meaning behind Lo Naale? What does it mean we will not go up? What did he meant by this answer? And I'd like to give you first the commentator's response, and then I'd like to share with you some of my thoughts on this uh, brief lesson today. In the Targums, first let's start and walk through the Targum. In Targum Onkelos, as an example, a Lachic Targum, it uses the word Lo Nisak, which is a literal uh, uh, translation of not going up. But the question becomes, not going up to where? Targum Yonatan says, Lo Nisok Lataman, which means we will not go up to there. Okay, and the question that we must ask ourselves, where is there? And according to Targum, it is talking about the land. We will not go to the land. That was their answer that they have given us, okay? That was one answer, okay? But Rashi took a different opinion. Rashi says, Lona Ale, that they meant when they say Lona Ale, they meant we Moses, we are not going to come to you. Moses, we don't want to deal with you. There is a rejection not to go into the land. There is a personal rejection to uh, Moses. The Rashba, who was the grandchild of Rashi, he present another uh, opinion. The Rashba opinion was that it, 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 they said that Moses called them there because they were judges, they were, they were the leaders. Moses wanted to talk to them about judicial matter on how to deal with this. And according to the Rashba, the Rashba says that they said lo naale because they did not want to take part of any uh, judicial part of this argument, they were impartial, okay? 
So there are three possible answers to this verse, to those two words, lo na'ale. One, that they mean we will not go up to the land. Number two, that they say we will not meet with you, Moses. And number three, that um, they did not want to be part of this. They were a third party of this, and they said we don't want to, to be uh, part of this, okay? And Evan Ezra said, Lo na'ale, he's talking about Aliyah as a, as a physical higher plane. They did not want to come to the Mishkan, okay? They, they, they didn't want to come to, the, to be around the tent of meeting, to meet with, with, with Moses, okay? Um, which, in essence, they're saying um, not wanting to be around Moses or, or hearing, basically rejecting Moses' leadership. Why do I think that this is significant, this is important? I actually believe, believe it or not, that the Rashbam is the one that represents the most important uh, and correct, in my opinion, without getting to the details, answer. Both of those men wanted not to take any part of this argument and they stepped back. It's called, there is a name for us uh, uh, today in, uh, in uh, the body of Messiah. That's something that I see a lot of. It's the word is passivity. Not want to offend, uh, not want to take sides, uh, wants to be politically correct, uh, uh, you know, um, not to be too much extreme, extremism is bad, etc., etc., etc. I would like to remind you as a parallel a story, another story in the Torah. It's called the Golden Calf story. When Israel built a golden calf while Moses go and bring the, the, the Torah down. Out of 600,000 men, 3,000, only 3,000 were part of building the golden calf. Out of 597, what did they do? They did nothing. They did nothing. They stood there and they watch as, as, as the other 3,000 make a mockery out of God. There is a parallel here that I see between the story of Mount Sinai to those two men. Those two men, they wanted to be politically correct. They didn't want to take upon themselves the burden of Moses, so they said, we're going to step back. Friends, we cannot step back. And I talk to you today, especially to those of you who are attending congregations. Your responsibilities is to make an aliyah and to support your leaders. The only way that the messianic movement can work is if we have support system around the leadership. And there is something that I can say to and I attest to dealing with so many messianic congregations have been in so many places all over the world. There is a general rebellion and chaos and disorder in the messianic world where every person wants to be the rabbi, every person wants to be the leader, every person wants to be held. And sometimes when we hear things that spoke against our leaders, we don't stop them. Those men had the responsibility to stand up and stop it, what the other 250 men, including Korah, said, but they didn't. They thought, well, it's not our battle. Beloved, when people talk against your leaders, it is they talking against Hashem himself. That's why the rabbis is giving us a rule, and now we understand this rule. It sounds extreme, but it's go like this. It's in pure kavod. Whoever argue against his rabbi is as he argue against his shechina. Wow, you say what? The rabbi made himself to be God? No, that is not what the rabbis are saying at all. In essence, if you are not supporting those who God put in, in trusted and put in charge, you are not only leader of the kingdom of God, you are taker from the, uh, those who are building the kingdom of God. And sometimes you don't even have to say anything just by standing on the sideline, okay, and doing nothing. Uh, you're becoming this. 
I am seeing, and, and I hope those who watch this program ask themselves the question, am I a builder today? Am I a protector? You have a, a responsibility of protecting the unity inside the body of the Mashiach. When things are said, Lashon Ara, as an example, like in this case, there was a clear case of Lashon Ara against Moshe. Did the people do anything against them? They did nothing. When you hear Lashon Ara in your synagogue, specifically against your leaders, what do you do? I'm challenging you today. Don't be like Korach and his son. Take a stand. And this process of making step is the name Aliyah going up, stepping up to the plate. They said Lona Ale because they did not want to step up to the plate. Friend, it's time to the body of Messiah to step up to the plate. And the way that we step up to the plate is by bringing tikkun in a places when it's not our place to bring a tikkun even to. That was not their battle to fight, and they made it clear to Moshe, it's not our place, and we're not going to take it involved on this. Here is what us as messianic believers need all to do. This is Torah, friends. Galatians chapter 6, verse 2. Bear each other burdened. This is the Torah of Mashiach. That is Torah, friend. Bear, take care of the burden to each other. They were not willing to carry the burden of Moshe Rabbeinu. And think about what an awesome rabbi Moses was, yet the people were selfish and not willing to take the burden. My pray to all of us who attend Messianic congregations, perhaps churches, maybe you become this burden keeper, burden taker of your leadership, helping to build the kingdom of God. That's what God is called the last days. Don't be like the 3,000 men and don't be like like those, those two here, Datan and Aviram, that by their lack of action has brought the worst action upon Israel. Sometimes it is our lack of action that bring the worst actions against us and against the, the fact that what God uh, ordained. There is no time, friends, to passivities in these last days. Let us do the things that are right, right and holy and bring honor to those that God has put in leadership in our community. Hope this lesson today, maybe today, was not as much a messianic lesson as more a, a lesson in a Musar, in Jewish ethics and Jewish law 101 of what does it mean to carry each other's burdens. That's really truly to me what it is. Let us not say anymore, Lonale. Let us say we are ready to step up to the, to the plate and put a barrier between us and our leaders so they can, they can be effective uh, tools uh, to, to build the kingdom of God together, together. God bless you and Shabbat Shalom. I'll see you next time.